Hi, this is Dr. Sandra Kate Webster, <clears throat> and today I'm going to show you an example of how to do a two-factor repeated matrix analysis of variance with uh, SPSS. So I'm going to start with a background on the hypothesis. Anna collected data from people who looked at images that were much like the ones that you're seeing on the screen right now. She varied both the emotion and she presented joy, anger, disgust, fear, surprise, sadness, and neutral emotions. We're only going to look at three of them for the example today. And she presented them either in a full face condition, eyes only condition, or with the eyes covered. And the basic question for us today is, uh, does the amount of information presented in the images, eyes, no eyes, or full face, interact with the type of emotion that's being displayed. And so the data are in SPSS already, and these are only a portion of her data set. If you look at this, I have it organized the way you would organize it for a repeated measures design. So we have participant ID, but then I have, I'm looking at it as a three by three. So I have three emotions, joy face, joy eyes, joy covered, Anger face, anger eye, anger covered, fear face, fear eyes, fear covered. This is the way you set it up for uh, a repeated measures ANOVA. Instead of having a column for your independent variable, you, you have a different column for each level of each independent variable. So because this is a three by three, that means there are nine cells, there are nine columns here. So that's the basic data setup. In order to do the analysis, I go to Analyze. I use General Linear Model, and I move down to Repeated Measures. I have already done this before, so let's assume that I hadn't, and I'll remove them. So the first level is going to be what is varying slowest across here. So you see I've got three joys, three angers, three fears. And so I'm going to call that emotion. And there are three levels. Add it. And then the next one is the one that varies like more quickly. So face, eyes, cover, face, eyes, cover, face, eyes, cover. And so I'm calling that features. And there are three levels. This is a univariate analysis of variance. We basically have the proportion correct. And um, that's out of 100 for each of these conditions. They had multiple uh, experiences of each of the nine conditions that they got to rate. And so it's univariate that way. We don't have any multivariates, and so we don't need to worry about having a measure name and having multiple variables here. Define. So I did it before, so I'm going to take it out. I would put all of the variables in, and since I have them in the correct order to start with, it makes it easy. And I'll double check. Does joy, joy is 1, anger is 2, fear is 3, and then the features 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now it doesn't tell me which ones meant what, but I know that it's face, eyes, covered. So full face, eyes only, eyes covered. Under options, I'm going to choose descriptive statistics and effect size. Under expected means, I'm going to choose to get um, the uh, comparisons for each of them. And I'm going to put the emotion by features in. Under plots, I would choose to get emotion on the horizontal axis and features on separate lines. It really doesn't matter which way I do it. And I'm going to have it as a line chart. Continue. And that's basically all I need to do in order to specify this repeated measures analysis of variance. OK. Here we have the output. And first we get our design. And there are two within subjects factors, emotion 
and features and here's how they were defined and I checked this to make sure that I got it right because this is the only way SPSS knows the design of the experiment the way I specified this. Here are the descriptive statistics always good to look at them. I skipped the multivariate test because this is not a multivariate analysis of variance. When I look at the test of within subjects effects because this is a within subjects uh, design each source has its own error term. And so I will find the F on the top row, 88.99. This significance is p-value less than 0 0.001. The partial eta square is quite high, so there were huge differences in their ability to detect emotion. It's significant. It's also a large magnitude of effect. Features, whether they saw the eyes only, the full face, or the eyes covered, was also significant. And the same P less than 0 0.001. And this is a good eta squared. So there we go. And here is the interaction. The interaction, 32, and you've got your degrees of freedom. You, you get them right there. 32.135, P less than 0 0.001 the eta squared 0.594. So all three of these effects, both main effects and the interaction, are significant and they're also having large effects. We can skip the within subjects contrast. We can look at our comparisons to see which things are significantly different. So this is comparing each emotion to the other emotions. They're all different. This is comparing on features. And when we look at this, we see that basically we get a big difference between full face and both of the others, but not so much between eyes covered and eyes only. It's not quite significant. And here we have the confidence intervals for the cell means. So there are nine cell means, and there's the confidence intervals. And this is the graph. So we have to remember which things these lines represent. Full face, eyes only, eyes covered. And we have to remember which emotions these were. Joy, if I go back up to my within subjects. Joy, anger, fear, go back to the graph. You can navigate quickly with the navigation bar. Joy, anger, fear. So fear was best detected with the eyes covered. Joy also. But when it came to anger, it was the eyes only. And so this is a way we would interpret this analysis.